Enfield Kite would like to welcome parents and caregivers to Preparing for the Kindergarten Transition, an online presentation in collaboration with the Enfield Public Schools. First to welcome you, our Superintendent, Mr. Christopher Dresick. Hi everybody. So normally we do this in person and it's a lot more fun when I get to stand in front of you in front of an auditorium and actually see all of your faces. Um, but welcome for those of you who this is your first experience with a child coming into the Enfield Public Schools. Uh, let me be the first, hopefully, to welcome you to the Enfield Public Schools. But most importantly, for all you first time parents of kindergartners, let me tell you that everything's going to be OK. This is the part where it's fun to see your faces, because like you, I was no different sitting in an audience actually 13 years ago this month, just like you getting ready to send my oldest daughter into kindergarten. Um, and after I medicated my wife, we listened to a presentation very similar to what you're listening to this evening or watching this evening virtually. Um, and then when, after we were done with that and my wife came back down to earth, we realized it was going to be okay. We felt much more comforted because of the great people that were involved with our children's school. Um, and I hope that you will feel when this is over. Um, I'm also here to tell you that, yes, everything's going to be okay. And proof of that is that same little kindergartner and pigtails that I sent off 13 years ago, we're experiencing it for a second time where this year we're sending that same little girl off to college. So it doesn't get any easier from this, but the time will fly. Um, but just everyone needs to know and understand that everybody that you're gonna come across with in this process and your experience at the Enfield Public Schools are gonna treat your child the same way they treat their own. So welcome to the Enfield Public Schools. Um, you're going to hear a lot of information. If you're overwhelmed with all these presentations tonight, don't be, don't get nervous. <laughs> don't get too confused over everything. Everybody here is is going to hold your hand as much as possible when we're allowed to to get you and your child through this. But you're going to have a great experience at the schools, and we can't wait to see you hopefully in person come September. Have a good evening. We welcome you now to meet our three primary principals and vice principals. Hi, I'm Lisa Hunter, principal of Hazardville Memorial School. I know that sending your child to kindergarten can be a scary and emotional time for you, but I'm here to tell you, breathe, relax, it's going to be okay. 16 years ago, I sent my daughter to kindergarten, and every time I thought about her being away from me for the whole day, I wanted to cry. But I knew that if she saw me worried, she would become anxious because she watched my every move. So instead, I talked about how fun kindergarten would be, and I even took her to the playground at her new school at the end of the day so she could play and get used to her new school. Kindergarten is a wonderful experience in Enfield, and we have an amazing team of teachers ready to welcome and nurture your child. Kindergarten builds the foundation for the love of learning and so much more. Can't wait to see your kindergartners in September. See you soon. Hi, my name is Andrew Pear, and I'm the assistant principal at Hasbro Memorial School. I wanna take this time just to talk to you about how to get involved. There's no better time than right now to get involved in your child's education. There's different ways that you can go about getting involved. You can attend a PTO meeting. You can attend a kite meeting. If meetings aren't for you, you can always volunteer at your child's school. There's many different events. There's school dances. There's field days. Um, you can reach out to your child's teacher and ask about different ways in which you can be involved in the classroom as well. If none of those are for you, you can also talk to your child at home. Let them know that you value education and that you're just as excited as them when they come home and they want to tell you about their day. Have a great year. Hey everyone, my name is Mark Lord, Principal of Benfield Street School. I'd like to take a minute to discuss the importance of reading with your child. This is one of the best ways to prepare your child academically for kindergarten. Briefly, there is no specific reading part of the brain, as written language is a fairly new invention. Instead, multiple parts of the brain work together when reading. For newer readers, the visual and auditory parts of the brain work together to translate the symbols we see into sounds we have heard. When you read with your child and point to the words, you are showing them the relationship between these symbols and words they hear every day. 
This is establishing their first steps towards phonemic awareness. So pick a favorite book, find a comfortable spot, and try to make this part of your daily routine. Along with some letter identification and letter to sound practice, your child will be in great shape to start their exciting journey into kindergarten. Can't wait to meet you all in September. Goodbye. Hello and welcome incoming kindergarten families. I am Bethany Collado, the assistant principal at Enfield Street School. As you and your child prepare for kindergarten in the fall, one important readiness skill you can work on with your child is letter identification especially learning the letters of their name and also being able to write their name. Letter identification is one of the first skills needed for students to begin the process of learning to read. We encourage you to find opportunities to practice letter identification, such as playing games to help your child recognize the letters of the alphabet, play hide and seek with refrigerator magnets, use shaving cream, sand, or salt to have your child write the letters of the name with their fingers, trace letters using crayons, pencils, markers, writing letters with sidewalk chalk, posting your child's name on paper around the house and having them state the letters in their name, dry erase board letter writing, pointing to letters and identifying letters in alphabet books, and using movable alphabet letters. These are just some of the ways that you can help your child learn the letters of the alphabet. We encourage you to work with your child and have them practice learning their letters every day. Happy learning and we can't wait to see you in the fall. Hi, I'm Jim Graham, Principal at Henry Barnard School. Let me start my segment by sharing how excited everyone is to welcome a new group of kindergartners and their families to Enfield Public Schools for what we're all hoping is going to be a more traditional school year next year. In this presentation, you'll learn a tremendous amount about Enfield Public Schools, what we have to offer, and what to expect in our kindergarten classrooms next year. But for now, I'd like to talk to you about kindergarten readiness and some of the things you and your child can do together between now and September to prepare for what I'm sure will be a wonderful kindergarten experience. Now, we all read with our little ones. We draw together, we color, we tell stories. These things contribute to the development of important pre-reading and writing skills. Counting together and talking about numbers doesn't happen as consistently. Including numbers in your everyday conversation is just as important. Doing so helps children to develop one-to-one -one correspondence and an understanding of number. The nice thing is, is that these things are easy to include. It's as simple as counting squirrels or birds on a walk or bike ride. The number of cars that pass by the front of your house. Number of shoes at the front door on your way in and out of your home. A favorite of mine is talking about the place settings at the table as you prepare for a meal together. How many plates are there? How many glasses? Are there the same number of glasses as there are forks, and why? These are some simple things that will go a long way in kickstarting skill development and give your child a great start. Thank you for your time, and I look forward to getting to know all of our new families and students over the coming months. Thank you again, and enjoy the rest of the presentation. Hi, families. My name is Allison Law, and I am the assistant principal at Henry Barnard School. I really look forward to meeting you and your children. To help with getting ready for kindergarten, I have some tips and tricks from the occupational therapy team that will help with fine and visual motor skills, as well as how to enhance upper body strength and hand strength. The activities that are going to be suggested should be completed while your child is laying on their stomach or by using a vertical surface, such as a covered wall or a refrigerator door. Some activities your children can complete include complete puzzles while laying on their belly, use clothespins. As an example, color code the clothespins and have them clip them into matching jars. Use a magnetoodle, operate a spray bottle to clean tables, wheelbarrow walking, silly putty, manipulate it, pinch it or cut it with scissors, pop plastic bubbles on packing sheets using a pinch or grasp with their fingers. One other helpful tip is getting ready to hold the pencil. There are four steps to this process and I will show you a model of it. Step one, with their favorite hand, have them pinch the end of the pencil with the thumb and pointer finger about one inch from the point. Step two, with the other hand or helper hand, rotate the pencil to rest on the web space between the thumb and the first finger. Step three, Position the middle finger under the pencil to complete the three-finger triangle around the pencil. 
And step four, bend the ring finger and little finger into the palm and rest the hand on the table. An example looks like this. Welcome to kindergarten. I'm really looking forward to meeting you. Hi guys, and today I'm gonna tell you what's your favorite day at school. So my favorite things about kindergarten are we get to play, and we get to learn, and we get to do gym. Hello, my name is Ms. Krakunis, and I teach kindergarten at Enfield Street School. I would like to first start by talking about what we learn in kindergarten, and it's going to be a little bit overwhelming to hear but we do a lot of learning and there's a lot of growth throughout the year. First, we teach reading, math, writing, science, social study, phonics, which is part of reading. There's also the parts of executive functioning and social skills. So I'll go back. In reading and phonics, we teach letters and sounds, sight words, word parts, which is like rhyming and uh, word families. We teach the kids how to read and the difference between long and short vowels. In math, we teach numbers, how to count one to a hundred by ones, tens, and fives. We learn addition and subtraction. We learn about 2D and 3D shapes and measurement, which would be length, weight, how to compare, longer, shorter, heavier, lighter, that kind of thing. In writing, we learn how to form letters, but also how to draw pictures to go with stories. We learn more about adding more details and labels to pictures and words. Our units are how-to books, so the kids will write directions for things that they know how to do. We teach opinion writing and narrative writing. Our science units are weather, ecosystems, engineering design, and forces and interactions. That type of learning is very hands-on with a lot of experiments, a lot of things that go right and a lot of things that go wrong and how to fix those. Social studies, it's a lot about the kids and our community, our school community, the Enfield community, our classroom community, but we also go into family and geography with uh, maps, maps of Enfield, maps of Connecticut, maps of our school, maps of the United States of the world. And we talk about history then versus now and putting it in relation, like this is what a phone looked like, this is what a phone looks like now. We build and teach social skills that kids are coming in with and that we need to work on as things arise in our classroom, but sharing and taking turns using materials properly. Kids might use Legos at home, but the way we use Legos at school might be different. Same with markers, just teaching those expectations, taking care of class materials and how to express oneself effectively and safely. Executive functioning, we also teach how to manage time, pay attention, plan and organize, and remember details. All right, take a deep breath. Transitioning to kindergarten can be tricky and overwhelming and sad, but also exciting. And it's a new experience with new opportunities most importantly, if you stay calm, cool, and collected, your child will too. If you are telling them all about how exciting and fun and all the new friends they're going to make and all of the new experiences they're going to have, your kid will also be ready to have all of those experiences. A good way to start that transition is to establish a routine at home for school, even if you start now, even if you already have one, you might already have one, but bedtime and morning routines will help ease uncertainties and assist with a smooth send off. 
keeping those routines the same and those expectations the same from now until when the kids start school. Okay, here's an example of a kindergarten schedule. The order may be different day to day, different school to school, but here's a gist of what we do every day. We are in school all day, every day, on an, in a normal year. There is no nap time. So we are going and learning all day long. Uh, so we start with arrival and breakfast. We have a morning routine once all the kids are settled into our classroom. Lunch count, take attendance, do the Pledge of Allegiance, morning announcements. There's usually some type of morning work as all the kids are coming into the classroom to get them settled and ready. We have a morning meeting, helps establish the routines for the day, the expectations, and builds our classroom community. Reader's workshop, snack and recess. We have a math block. We do lunch at school, so your kid can bring a lunch from home or buy a lunch at school. Then we have a special, one special, sometimes two per day. A writer's workshop block, a playtime, and that will be explained even further in the executive functioning part of this presentation. Closing circle to wrap up the day, talk about feelings, close up any loose ends, and then dismissal. Okay, like I mentioned in our schedule, we have Readers and Writers Workshop, which is a program from Teachers College or Lucy Calkins. It's where students learn the foundational skills that help them read and write independently. We also have a phonics program through the same Teachers College, which helps build the skills that they'll need to read and write. Starts at the beginning of the year with letters, letter sounds, identifying their letters, their names, then how to form those letters, how to put them together to make words, writing them, and then eventually they'll be writing sentences and reading sentences. For our math program, we use something called Ready Math, and it's designed to get the kids ready for first grade. Again, we start very slow with number zero, work our way up to number 10. We do adding and subtracting within five, within 10, learn about team numbers and place value, 3D shapes, 2D shapes, measurement. A lot of really, really fun things happen in um, our math block. The kids will also learn skills needed to transition them to be problem solvers and think like a mathematician. There's also a lot of hands-on learning that happens in math and our Ready Math program has an app that goes at the kids' pace. So they are practicing all of the skills that they need even if it's ahead of where we are in class or behind where we are in class. Also, like I mentioned before, the kids attend a special every day, sometimes two. We have PE, which they definitely go to two times a week, art, music, computers. Library is usually teamed up with another special and STEAM, they go every other week. So that's also usually teamed up with another special. But the kids will see different teachers for those. So we have a PE teacher, an art teacher, a music teacher. Um, and so they get more adults to hang out with and a different, a different learning environment. And uh, the kids super duper love specials. Okay. Kindergarten in a pandemic. I can only speak to what is happening right now, but kindergarten is still fun. Kindergarten is still awesome, in fact. As of right now, students are in class two days a week or home every day. And if they come to school two days a week, they are learning at home three days a week on their district issued iPads. So every kiddo in the district has an iPad. 
from school. It's a school iPad, has all of the things that they need for school on it. Their teacher is providing direct instruction to the students, whether they are in school or at home. So at the same time, if your kids are at home, they're logging on to a meeting, the teacher is conducting the meeting, the kids in school, the kids at home are hearing the same thing at the same time. Kids are still doing hands-on learning and, and attending specials. So we still get to have art class and music and still using different math manipulatives and building and all socially distanced. Everybody has their own materials. Most importantly though, kids are laughing, playing, making friends, making memories, being silly, or reading books. They're having these incredible creations. Kindergarten is definitely super fun. The kids love coming to school. We certainly don't know what the fall is going to look like, but if it's back to how it was in 2019 or like 2020, the kids are still gonna have a really, really good year. They're going to learn a lot. They're going to make tons of friends. They're gonna still have really fun teachers who want to be there and want to help them. So it's a lot to worry about, but it will be all right. I am Christine Nizzolo. I'm a kindergarten teacher at Hazardville Memorial School. Welcome to kindergarten. I'm going to talk to you about how we support the development of executive function skills through a variety of activities throughout our day. All kindergarten classrooms in our district um, you will see that teachers are working to help the children develop executive function skills. When we were working with a hybrid model, teachers were also including some executive function development activities throughout their day. Um, what are executive function skills and why is it so important for us to teach them in the kindergarten classroom? We'll take a look at this video and this should give you an idea of what they are and why we're teaching them. We're not born with the skills we need to get things done successfully, especially in this fast and complicated world. But here's the good news. The skills we need can be taught, and they form a foundation for self-regulation and help build social emotional skills. Grouped together, three of the most foundational are called executive functions. Executive functions are a set of three cognitive skills, flexible attention, working memory, and inhibitory control. When complex things are happening around us, executive functions help us stay on task, make plans, set goals, and carry them out successfully. They act like a traffic flagger, intentionally managing and coordinating many things at once, like helping drivers and pedestrians stay safe and making sure they obey the rules of the road. Flexible attention allows us to shift our attention when necessary, directing it to the most important tasks and sustaining it while we're working on them. Flexible attention allows us to switch focus quickly from one thing to another. Working memory is the ability to remember and use important information, like driving directions. Working memory allows us to store important information so we can access it when needed. Inhibitory control is the ability to pause and think before we act. It helps us resist impulses. It keeps us on task and helps us set goals and carry them out. Executive functions help students learn and be successful in school, solving math problems, following directions, reading, playing sports, and resolving conflicts. These skills will last a lifetime and be used every day in school, at work, and at home. They're a vital part of an education that teaches the whole child. We all start our day with a morning meeting. This is a fun way to get our day started by greeting everyone 
and saying hello. When someone says hello to you, you always smile and you feel good about yourself. Um, we take a look at our date by using our linear calendar. We check out the schedule to see what activities we will be doing throughout the day. We also will count the number of days we've been in school. We might practice our executive function skills by doing a freeze dance or some graphic practice. On. But whatever we do in that morning meeting, it is always meant to be a fun way to get our day started. Play centers are our favorite time of the day. Uh, this is the time when the children get to play, explore, create, invent, using all of the steam materials we have. They get to role play using our kitchen materials. There are so many things that the children can do during our playtime. Although during, during this time of pandemic, it was a little more challenging um, knowing that we had to social distance. But, you know, when you think outside the box, we are able to get our children to still play, still have fun, still be creative, and practice their social skills during our playtime. We are fortunate here in Enfield to have the Lego Corporation so close, and we are fortunate to participate in the Lego Creative Builder program. Uh, due to pandemic and hybrid learning, unfortunately, we have not had our Lego teachers coming class to class to teach our children with those kits, but our kindergarten teachers are still using them daily. We use them for six bricks. We use them for math. We use them for free play. We use them for challenges. Um, our children are so lucky to have these Lego kits used throughout the day in the classroom. Imaginary challenges are so much fun in the kindergarten classroom. Um, as you know, children come to this world um, with an open mind and they're just ready to conquer any challenge that's given to them. And so what is an imaginary challenge? Well, you might ask the child to, we might ask the children to build the tallest tower that they can, build a bridge that the billy goats can cross over without the troll getting them, um, build a wall that Humpty Dumpty can sit on without falling off and cracking, build a ramp that a car can go down with no obstacles in the way. Um, there are many, many challenges that we present to them throughout the year in kindergarten. Um, and what's great about these challenges is they take on um, the role of learning. They are experimenting and exploring and building and they're testing things out and sometimes they get frustrated. Um, but you remind them that you're not making a mistake. You're just going to try again. Nothing is wrong with what you built. You just need to try it a different way. And then they learn to try things in a different way. And as the year goes on with these um, imaginary challenges, you start to see them become less and less frustrated with these challenges and they just take things apart and start all over again. It's a great way um, for them to be active participants in their learning. Recess is such an important part of our day. Uh, we try to get outside and get fresh air as often as we can. And especially during this time of the pandemic, being able to get outside and have mass breaks and get some fresh air, run around, build our gross motor and our fine motor skills. Um, it is so important too, to help us build our executive function skills. We are focusing our intention on the details of a game we might be playing, trying to remember the rules of the game we might be playing, um, it helps us to develop our impulse control when we have to wait our turn to um, play in the game or wait our turn to get on a swing or wait our turn to slide down that slide. And it also helps to promote positive behavior. Once we are back into the classroom, the children have had that opportunity to burn off that excess energy and to run around and socialize. And now they're ready to come back in and sit down and focus on the tasks that are at hand. Hi, I'm Miss Dow from Henry Barnard School, and I want to say welcome to kindergarten. I'm sure you're wondering, how do I prepare my child? We're going to talk about four things that you can do before your children come to school. Number one, we're going to build independence. Number two will be instill responsibility. Number three will be teach practical skills. And number four, talk it up. The first thing you can do to prepare your child for kindergarten is to build independence. Building independence will help their confidence rise and their self-esteem grow. One of the ways to do this is to teach them to get themselves dressed. 
being able to put on their own clothes and put their socks on and put their shoes on really helps them feel grown up. They need to know how to put on their own coats and how to zip them up and down when they come to school. We use our backpacks a lot, so they need to be able to unzip their backpack, put things in, take things out, and then zip it up again. And being able to put on their own gloves and hats will help them be independent and make them feel confident. The next thing you can do to prepare your child for kindergarten is to instill responsibility. We're a community in kindergarten and we all pitch in. One of the ways you can do that at home is to teach your child how to clean up after themselves. They can put away their toys in the correct bin when they're done using them. They can put the Play-Doh back in the container and put on the lid. They could help you set the table for breakfast or lunch and dinner. They can help clear the dishes by putting them in the sink and on the counter, and they can even wipe the table for you. Doing this gives children a sense of pride and accomplishment, and it helps them learn to contribute to a community. The third thing you can do to prepare your child for kindergarten is to teach them practical skills. One of those skills is to use the restroom independently. Students need to be able to go in, use the restroom, and then wash their hands. We use two pumps of soap, we scrub the top and the bottom, and in between our fingers, we rinse, and then we dry with one or two paper towels. Being able to tie your own shoes is key in kindergarten. Big kids can tie their own shoes. Open up snacks without help from anybody. Maybe they have a pair of scissors at home that are kid sized and they learn how to cut things open so they can eat them and don't need assistance. All of this builds trust in themselves and their abilities, and that leads to both personal and academic growth. The next thing to do to prepare your child for kindergarten is to talk school up. Children are gonna follow your lead. If you're positive, they are gonna be positive. If you're excited, they're gonna be excited too. The first day I dropped off my daughter for kindergarten, she looked at me, she said, bye mom, love you, and off she went. She was so excited to go to kindergarten. Well, how did I do that? I took her after school hours and on the weekends and in the summer over to the school and we talked about what school would be like and how she was going to meet her teacher and we played on the playground. So when she got to that school, it wasn't the first time she had been there and she felt like it was her school. So talk it up. My favorite part of the day is play centers at the end of the day and PE. Thank you. I love my teacher and my friends. This is my favorite thing about kindergarten. Everything. Seriously. And here, with some important medical information, Enfield Public Schools Nursing Supervisor. Hi, this is Trisha Beta, the Nursing Supervisor for Enfield Public Schools. I'm going to give you the medical piece for kindergarten. So the most important thing that you're going to want to do is to get your physical. So the physicals have to be after September 1st of 2020. So if your student should have a um, summer birthday especially, you want to try to book those appointments now as the doctor's offices get busier and busier as school approaches because of other mandated physicals and summer camps and all those kinds of programs. So again, if your student needs a physical to get into school, do try to book those appointments now. The physicals, um, just one um, explanation for that is that those students that are already enrolled in the Enfield Public Schools preschool program at the Stowe Building, this is different from being enrolled in the Enfield Child Development Center or ECDC. But if you're child is actually enrolled in the preschool program, then they do not need another physical to start kindergarten. They are all set. There may be some updated shots that would be given, vaccines, that kind of a thing, um, but they don't need an entire physical. However, if you have one, we're more than glad to take it and record it on their medical record. So the next piece for them will be their immunizations. There are quite a few immunizations that are given at the age of four. So if you have a copy at home currently that when you register, you could um, include for the nurse, that would be great because she can go over your child's immunization record and we plug it into our computer system 
and it will let us know if a vaccine was given too early, if a um, vaccine is due. It has all kinds of information that it, you know, just gives us automatically. And that would be a very good thing because then the nurse can let you know if your student is still missing some vaccinations or they're due for some in that four to five age, depending on your pediatrician. For students that might need to take medications during the school day, there are um, forms that would need to be filled out. So that is something that it, on your registration form, you might let the nurse know about so that she can send you those forms or tell you how to locate them on our website. Um, kids with allergies is of course always a big one, especially when they're starting school for the first time. Um, so please let your nurses know about that and they can let you know the different procedures at their schools, um, how we protect and help the kids with that. And if anybody has any questions, you can always contact the um, nurses in the primary schools. They'll be there till school ends and they come in off and on during the summer. And you can always contact me. My number is 860-253-5544. Or you can email me at tveda, V-A-Y-D-A, at Enfield Schools with an S at the end, dot org. Thanks so much and have a great year. Our teachers and administrators have shared a lot of information with you tonight. Now we'd like to share with you kindergarten through the parent's perspective. Hi, I'm Amanda Pickett, mom of Cam, a kindergartner at Enfield Street School and Tessa, an incoming preschooler. And just like you, I wrestled with our family decision around sending Cam to school. I was concerned about what the classrooms would look like due to COVID, would it be safe? Would the instruction be developmentally appropriate? And would he make any friends? I need to first acknowledge that yes, COVID has changed the environment. Masks, social distancing, no longer sharing materials, carpet time, are all adjustments that have been made, along with some others, to keep kids and staff safe. However, children thrive in environments that are consistent and routine-based. Schools offer that space. Teachers are working hard at teaching routines to students to ensure safety and predictability. I was so worried about Cam wearing a mask, and to be honest, he has adjusted so well. There's also been a ton of innovation, creativity, and flexibility in classrooms and instruction. Teachers are working hard to ensure that virtual and in-person instruction is developmentally appropriate, fun, and promote social interaction and connection. Cam's amazing teacher works hard to incorporate movement, games, and social interaction in her live and virtual instruction. Our kiddos are resilient. I can tell you that they are adapting. I think that Cam may be even better at handling the iPad, team meetings, and submitting work more than me, his mom. He has made friends too. Yes, it's difficult, but I actually think the virtual element has allowed me to learn more about his classmates and connect in different ways. We were invited to a socially distanced sledding over the weekend through a team's message. The last item I wanna stress is your power as families. Collaborate and communicate with your school staff. Let them know your concerns, ask questions and provide feedback. You're your child's best advocate and proactively communicating with the school promotes that. Cam's teacher is constantly emailing, sharing newsletters and keeping us informed on classroom instruction, but also on Cam's adjustment. I wanna share with you a quick story of Cameron to illustrate, yes, the challenge, but also the amazing opportunity in learning. An area that we struggle with at home is writing tasks. Many of the virtual assignments were to draw or write something and to take a picture and submit it. We had tantrums and meltdowns. So I reached out to his teacher and she gave me some great alternatives. Not everything had to be written or drawn. For example, one of his assignments was to draw a picture of a community helper. Of course, my son sunk in his chair. Instead, we went outside and picked up litter and sent a picture of his full garbage bag to his teacher. She was so excited to see the adaptation. We have worked out a system to know what assignments need to be written and where we have some flexibility to adapt. And based on my feedback to her, she's adjusted many of her lessons to be more flexible and offer multiple means of ways of expressing the learning. This dialogue has helped my son, his classmates, and his teacher's instructional practice. We're in this together and communicating your needs, questions, and ideas assists everyone in making school a better place for our learners. Hi, my name is Scott Ryder and I'm on the Enfield Board of Education. And I wanted to welcome all of our incoming parents and families of kindergarten students this fall. Um, I'm here to speak about the PTOs, which is something I was very involved in, still am. 
um, but from the first time my daughter, who's now going into eighth grade this fall, while you guys head into kindergarten, I was a volunteer at <clears throat> Hazardville Memorial School, and it's such an exciting time. So for all of you first time kindergarten families, you're gonna love it. It's the beginning of everything for these kids uh, and it's so exciting. Um, but I want to take a minute to talk about the PTOs, which is the parent-teacher organizations that we have at each of the three K-2 schools. Um, so you'll see this flyer in your packet. It says, uh, welcome to kindergarten from parents who've been there. So if you're gonna end up at Henry Barnard over on Shaker Road, um, you'll see the email address to reach out to the PTO parents, um, the moms and dads that run the PTO, and you can ask them questions that maybe you're not comfortable bothering quote unquote the principal with um what do you guys send in for snacks you know um what's it like on the bus um you know just questions that you feel more comfortable asking another parent um if you're going to end up at Enfield Street School same thing their contact information is here um and if you end up at Hazard Memorial School over on North Naple we'll be neighbors I don't live far from that school um I know the principals at every building. I know the assistant principals at every building. You guys are in great hands. Um, the teachers are fantastic. The K2 buildings are so welcoming. I just wish you all the best. Um, so good luck. Um, again, we were all in your seats very recently, you know, with our kids. Um, they keep getting older, but thank you for everything. And please reach out uh, to any of the school PTOs with any questions you have, and also please check out EnfieldPTO.com. That's EnfieldPTO.com and EnfieldPTO on Facebook. That's where you'll find a lot of updates about uh, Enfield Public Schools, uh, any letter that goes home, uh, flyers, fundraisers, all that stuff that we get from the principals. We also post there so you have a, a space if they get misplaced in the book bag on the way home. So everything's archived there and if you need something, you need to look back at something the principal said a couple weeks ago. There's always like a couple of months worth of principal's notices on there under principal's updates. Uh, there's activities calendars. There are school calendars, links to all that stuff um, that you might have. Um, and anything that you don't see on there, please reach out. There's a little question box and you can chat um, and ask anything. And if it's a school specific PTO question, I'll make sure that those questions get forwarded uh, to your PTOs. So good luck again. Thank you. We wish you all the best. I like I ready math because I like it because I I like getting the answers right. Mostly about I like of kindergarten is art because it's so colory and fun. So where do you go from here? In this next section, we will walk you through the process of applying for kindergarten. First, we recommend you register for Enfield's live question and answer session on April 22nd by visiting EnfieldKite.org. Next, you will want to begin collecting information required for registration. This includes your child's birth certificate, two proof of residency documents, immunization records, copy of your child's physical, and proof of guardianship. When you have everything together, take a picture or make a photocopy so you can attach those documents when it's time to register. On May 1st, Enfield Public Schools officially invites you to register your kindergartner. You can do this by going to enfieldschools.org, scroll to the new student registration section, Click the 2021-2022 school year, create a new account, and begin the form. Your child's application is not complete until all required documents are submitted. The Enfield Kite website has instructions for submitting those to your new school. Since it is unclear what the summer will look like, there are no plans for in-person meet and greet. Begin watching your mail in August to receive your welcome letter that includes your child's room assignment and any important information to begin school on September 7th.